Hey. So my talk is titled Gameplay Critique, and we will move right along. So my name is Richard Terrell, and I go by Kirby Kid from my history of playing competitive Smash Brothers. So that's kind of where I got my name, and I stuck, so it's good. And uh, I'm one of three developers of a game called Bar Bari Ball. It's one of the four games in the Sports Friends package, and it's a fighting sport game hybrid. It looks like Smash Brothers, so I guess that's uh, the connection there that you should draw. Uh, I'm the sole writer of a very large blog, criticalgaming.com, and I've been writing for this blog for over six years. And a month ago, I gave a talk at NDK titled How Kirby and Smash Brothers Taught Me to Design Better Games. And in it, I detailed, <laughs> detailed my journey from being a player, competitor, blogger, game tester, game researcher, and finally a game developer. And I explained how each step uh, gave me the foundation to better understand games. And the formatting's a little weird, but it's pretty obvious what that says. So two weeks ago, my team launched a website that we consider to be next generation games criticism, and it's called StarSeedObservatory.com. And as you might have guessed from the title, it's a website completely dedicated to Starseed Pilgrim, which is an indie game made by Alexander Martin or Droken, as he's known. And uh, this game came out a few years ago. And we put sort of all the ideas that we had uh, discussing as a group into this site, including things that we thought were important to games criticism, like uh, having a glossary and representing the quotes from all the different various types of players in the fan base. And we combed the internet and created sort of a wall of quotes where you can see 140 plus quotes, all said by different gamers in different ways. And we felt that representing these voices were important. And we have a whole bunch of other different features and structures that sort of make the website work. But this talk isn't really about the website, it's about the philosophy behind the website. So, Gameplay Critique is uh, the name we go by, and it sounds like another generic name for Games Criticism Group. But there's a couple of things in this title that I really like. And uh, for the first, first off, it subtly implies a focus on gameplay. Uh, the first two words, Gameplay Critique, which kind of puts sort of challenge-based encounters and gameplay right in the focus of what we do here. And uh, secondly, it's a title that comes across like Eat, Pray, Love, or Eat, Sleep, Play, or Play, Create, Share from Media Molecule's Little Big Planet. And when you read it like this, it kind of sounds like a set of instructions. First, get a game, then you play it, and then you critique. Like, these are the things you should be keeping in the back of your mind as you continue to go through what we're about, this game's criticism process. And um, yeah, so picking a game is important, playing it is important, putting the player and what they do and how they interact with the game at the heart of this kind of criticism was very important for us. And the last step, critique, is how the whole cycle sort of wraps back upon itself. You, you get the game, you play your critique, and that informs how, or that informs what you understand of the game, and it shapes how you play, and the cycle kind of repeats. And uh, this philosophy was born out of reflecting how I enjoyed games and how I love to play games. I love beating games, I love meditating with games. Uh, I have them on in the background as I do other things. I like mastering games, I talk about games with my brother, and I write about games. And it really felt like everything I did to enjoy games better all was centered around one kind of philosophy, which is detail-oriented, digging deep into it, just asking a bunch of questions and never letting that curiosity just fall flat. You're always looking a little bit deeper into the things you like and trying to figure out why you like them. And uh, Gameplay Critique is a philosophy that's based around developing a critical lens to understand the roles in the system of a game, and you use this lens as a um, a viewpoint, it's, it's a way of understanding yourself and the game at the same time. And this, this idea is often expressed in criticism. You're not only talking about the thing itself, the work, but you're also examining yourself at the same time. Not only what you choose to examine is very reflective of who you are, but what you say about it and how you dig into it is just really like a dual mirror process, and that's kind of what I really like about this philosophy. Uh, what's cool is it puts gameplay in the center of the focus. So we're playing games, and we're not only playing games, but we're playing games well. And we're trying to not have any excuses as far as how deeply we're willing to dig into these experiences in order to better inform our own opinions, our own critiques, and who we are, and how we're reflected through these games. So definitely the critique part, which comes after the play, is a very important and necessary part. And uh, that has shaped sort of the, the title and the information 
presented. So one thing I wanted to comment on was that there seems to be a lot of games and players out there and aspiring developers that have a whole bunch of different interests and focus. And based on my history of being uh, just a player growing up with games since I was three years old and then getting into competitive Smash Brothers and all these other types of games and then blogging about my experiences and really trying to put what I felt and experienced into words on the page so that other people could understand them. And then going into game, uh, to being a game tester and really looking at games from a different perspective. Not only spending all that time playing a game that I don't like, that was something that really sort of changed my perspective on games. Because we all spend time playing the games we like, but when you have to go to work every day and spend 40 hours in a game in a world that you would never spend any time in otherwise, it really teaches you something about what your opinion is, where, the, where it starts and ends, and how games are made, and looking at them beyond just, am I having fun? Like, what is this thing besides me having fun? And I felt that was very important. So having this kind of uh, rich experience, this rich history in games, and becoming a researcher, and then finally a developer on Bari Bari Ball, I didn't know exactly what to do with all of these different kinds of, these different kinds of thoughts, these notes, these experiences that I've collected over the years. And I found that creating this kind of games criticism, creating this kind of critique that bridges all these different areas and fills together was the only way that I could move forward without sort of letting go of the things that I felt were pretty evenly and equally important. So one, one cool thing with the website is we played Starseed Pilgrim for a few months and then we all decided to, my group, my group and I, the team that we assembled for games criticism work, we wrote essays or articles based on our own interests. So I wrote mine on game design, and I have a friend who's a music major who wants to uh, do music for games and eventually break into the industry that way. He did his on an analysis of the sound design and music design of Starseed Pilgrim. And just basically being led by our own interests, we all developed content. But then what we did beyond that was reading each other's work and critiquing what each other had to say on it and going the extra mile and finding quotes about uh, the game for people that share our opinions and people who don't. Uh, one thing with the wall of quotes is there's positive, neutral, and negative quotes that all talk about Star Sea Pilgrim and a bunch of different topics. And that kind of supports that we're not the only voices out there, but what we're bringing to the table is a way to better understand both the voices of others and our own particular critiques, comments, and opinions. But uh, one of the coolest things that came out of this project was we actually got Alexander Martin Droken, the creator, to join in on some of these conversations. And we said, we don't exactly like these aspects of Star Sea Pilgrim, but like, what do you think about it? Or maybe some of us liked it, some of us didn't. We had this very interesting roundabout conversation. And um, at the end of that, he decided to turn some of these ideas and actually put them back into the game. Because I think that's sort of that, that next level step that doesn't really exist a lot in any organized way currently. But we all have our, the games we play and the experiences we have. We all have our opinions and our, and our thoughts. But we don't necessarily have the best ways of testing them or actually being able to get hands on with our ideas. And, having that opportunity for Droken to take some of them and make them, put them in the game, and then have us play them again and start the cycle back over and see were, were we right, were we wrong, or ha what happened with all those ideas we had. And just it's just sort of a great way to, to better reflect on what we thought and, and how far we've come with the game. So that's uh, an exciting thing that's coming with the, this whole project. And it's something that I'll be talking and spearheading uh, with my time here at GDC. But I just wanted to leave you guys with this idea that a lot of these different pursuits that we have, a lot of these different areas and aspects of being a gamer and a critic and just a person in general can be combined in a really interesting way. And uh, I just hope you give this new style of games criticism a try. And that's my talk. <laughs>